Item number, SCP-5525. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. In accordance with GOC Resolution 206 and Overseer Mandate Bingo Fremont, the Foundation is responsible for maintaining the underwater blockade around SCP-5525. Enforcement of the blockade is assigned to Naval Task Force Chi-11, Neptune's Nightmare consisting of 12 Cerberus-class submarines and the support ships SCPS Lunatic Leap and SCPS Daring Dash, with additional fire support from the GOC surface combat vessels Iron Hand and Silver Fist. Footnote 1. The 12 Cerberus-class submarines are as follows. SCPS Guardian, SCPS Monitor, SCPS Watcher, SCPS Leviathan's Eye, SCPS Kraken's Maw, SCPS Tide Seer, SCPS Mirror Gaze, SCPS Storm Surge, SCPS Wave Whisper, SCPS Squid, SCPS Calamari, and SCPS Plato. Chi 11 is tasked with preventing any other vessels, including those of the Foundation or allied groups of interest, from approaching within 15 nautical miles of the outer perimeter of SCP 5525. Chi-11 is authorized to use all force necessary to dissuade, interdict, or destroy vessels attempting to enter or exit this containment zone. Any modifications to the parameters of the blockade around SCP-5525, aside from those related to force composition, require the approval of the GOC Council of 108 and the Foundation Overseer Council. In emergency situations, provisional modifications may be approved by a jointly issued order of Assistant Director Telemachus and O5-3. At this time, the Office of the Undersecretary General of the Global Occult Coalition is engaged in diplomatic talks with representatives of the United States government. In an attempt to negotiate the return of all artifacts removed from SCP-5525 prior to the establishment of current containment procedures. Description. SCP-5525 is the ruins and remains of a city constructed approximately 6,000 years ago by a species of alternative hominids, provisionally classified as Homo sapiens Aquarius, codeword designation Aquarian Disco. Aquarian Disco possessed a heavily insular but scientifically advanced civilization, with technologies far beyond the current human state of the art. One or more items of paratechnology employed by Aquarian Disco is known to be responsible for the destruction of their civilization and the transportation of SCP-5525 to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Despite its current location, large sections of the structure remain airtight and capable of supporting human life. Further information about the culture and technology of Aquarian Disco is classified L5-5525. In 1944, SCP-5525 was discovered by the submarine USS Dragonet during its initial shakedown cruise. At the time, the sailors aboard Dragonet mistakenly recorded the structure as a natural underwater feature in the ship's log. Later examination of the submarine's logs by naval intelligence officers uncovered inconsistencies between reported observations and recorded data, which prompted a mission to examine the area more closely using a surface trawler. Sonar readings taken by this trawler revealed the extent of SCP-5525 and confirmed that it was not a natural structure. Further operations involving SCP-5525 were thereupon transferred to the Department of Defense Paranatural Warfare Command, and all information regarding the structure was classified. Footnote 2. The Paranatural Warfare Command, colloquially referred to as the Pentagram. The Pentagram performed a number of surveys of SCP-5525 in the period between 1944 and 1963. Although no attempts were made to explore the interior of the structure, owing to its extreme depth. In 1963, an attempt was made to reach SCP-5525 by USS Thresher, resulting in the loss of the submarine with all crew. After this, no further attempts were made to explore SCP-5525 until 1979. In 1979, the Pentagram took ownership of the DSRV-3 Merlin, 
a deep sea submersible outfitted with numerous paratechnologies that would allow it to operate safely and secretly at extreme depths, including that of SCP-5525. Following initial operations where it was used to excavate several wrecks from the Seventh Occult War, Merlin was retasked for use in exploring SCP-5525. Merlin succeeded in reaching the structure and gaining access, whereupon the pentagram began a major archaeological operation aimed at finding and recovering any remaining functional artifacts. Based on what is known of Aquarian Disco technology, any objects recovered by the pentagram would likely be considered Thaumiel class artifacts if possessed by the Foundation. Footnote 3. The GOC classifies such technologies as hyper T, and forbids their operational use without prior approval from the Undersecretary General. The Foundation and the Global Occult Coalition became aware of SCP-5525 and the Pentagram's activities following the destruction of St. Jeremiah, which resulted from the inadvertent activation of an Aquarian Disco artifact during an attempt to remove it from the structure. Footnote 4. St. Jeremiah formerly an island in the Caribbean, comprising the sovereign state of Free Jeremiah, with a population of almost 15,000 people. In simultaneous emergency situations, the Overseer Council and the Council of 108 both agreed on the necessity of preventing further access to SCP-5525, and the desirability of recovering the artifacts that had already been removed from it. Working through the channels provided by Article 13 of the Köln Agreement, the Foundation and the GOC quickly established a set of joint containment protocols, with the Foundation taking responsibility for the blockade of SCP-5525. Nearby naval assets were immediately retasked to perform initial containment while a dedicated task force was assembled. Footnote 5. These nearby naval assets were comprised of the Foundation mothership carriers SCPS Jack Jumped and SCPS Lunatic Leap, with their aircraft wings and three Cerberus-class submarines, and the GOC surface combat vessels Brass Knuckle and Silver Fist. Addendum Initial Exploration After the destruction of St. Jeremiah, but before the establishment of the containment zone, American forces temporarily withdrew from SCP-5525 to monitor the structure for possible aftershocks. Despite the potential hazards, authorization was granted for a single reconnaissance mission to explore the interior of the structure before it could be reoccupied by the United States. Mobile Task Force Gamma-6, Deep Feeders, and Assessment Team 781, Pyramidians, were dispatched to survey SCP-5525 and determine the extent of the pentagram's activities. Most of what is currently known about Aquarian Disco and their culture was discovered during this expedition. In addition to gathering valuable information about Aquarian Disco, the survey team found that the Pentagram had located the armory or storeroom of one of the lower levels, which had then become the focus of recovery operations. This portion of SCP-5525 had experienced moderate structural damage and undergone a partial collapse before it was discovered, forcing the Pentagram to spend time on excavations. At the time containment was established, only 20% of the storeroom had been uncovered, from which many artifacts had not yet been removed. Documents found at the site indicate that the Pentagram had prioritized recovering those objects which could most easily be weaponized. Among the remaining artifacts was the weapon believed to have destroyed St. Jeremiah, which has been classified as SCP-5525 Antilles. The Pentagram had found SCP-5525 Antilles buried within the debris and had succeeded in excavating it, but accidentally activated it when attempting to move it. An inscription on the object, thought to be a name or identifier, was tentatively translated as Null Divider. Footnote 6. Alternative proposed translations include Division of Nothing, Division of Zero, Zero Division, and Nothing Undivided. Other than this inscription, the only other significant external feature of SCP-5525 Antilles is a touchscreen interface displaying a detailed map of the Earth's surface, which is used for targeting the device. Footnote 7. This map of the Earth's surface appears to update in real time. Addendum. Removed Artifacts. In the wake of Incident Inside Baseball, the storeroom where SCP-5525 Antilles was found was fully excavated, and a thorough examination of the contents performed. After comparing the results with inventory lists inside the storeroom, the following artifacts were found to have been removed from SCP-5525. 
Translated name, Null Divider. Code word, Antilles. Status, Contained. Translated name, Timeless Mirror. Code word, Byzantine. Status, Under Observation. The status of the following 10 artifacts is unknown. Empty Hive, code word Columbia. Darkness Visible, code word Dominion. Lightless Flame, code word Exodus. Void Furnace, code word Frontier. Perfect Cold, code word Gehenna. Abyss Well, code word Hibernia. Dead Mind, code word Ichabod. Infinite Point, code word Jericho. Crystal Number, code word Kronstadt. False Moon, code word Lorelei. While some of these artifacts may have been lost or destroyed, it is believed that most are currently in the custody of the Pentagram. Efforts are ongoing to locate and recover these missing artifacts. Addendum Incident Inside Baseball on December 30th, 1979, shortly after the survey team was dispatched and while the containment zone was still being established, elements of the US 13th Fleet began to approach SCP-5525. After repeated directives to turn back were ignored, the situation escalated into a full-scale naval engagement. T plus zero minutes. The lead ship of the 13th Fleet, the destroyer USS Thomas Lynch Jr., enters the 15 nautical mile containment zone. Captain Redmond Hathaway of Silver Fist orders his ship to open fire on Thomas Lynch Jr. T plus one minute. USS Thomas Lynch Jr. and its escorts return fire. GOC surface combat vessel Brass Knuckle begins moving forwards to screen SCPS Jack Jumped. T plus three minutes. SCPS Jack Jumped and SCPS Lunatic Leap begin deploying their aircraft wings. The two ships carry a total of 18 fixed wing VTOL aircraft between them. T plus 9 minutes. Silver Fist scores a direct hit against the forward magazine of USS Thomas Lynch Jr., resulting in a series of catastrophic internal explosions that cause the destroyer to break in half. T plus 15 minutes. Brass Knuckle completes its move to screen SCPS Jack Jumped. T plus 29 minutes. Submarine SCPS Fish Food is hit by a depth charge and sunk. T plus 36 minutes. Aircraft from SCPS Lunatic Leap succeeded in disabling the cruiser USS Temp. T plus 43 minutes. A massive missile salvo from the cruiser USS Mountain Meadows destroys the entire wing of aircraft from SCPS Lunatic Leap. Lunatic Leap begins to withdraw. T plus 55 minutes. Aircraft from SCPS Jack Jumped release an aerial dispersion of amnestic gas over USS Mountain Meadows, causing general confusion and chaos, which allowed Silver Fist to destroy the cruiser's bridge and engines. T plus 61 minutes. Thaumatologists aboard Silver Fist attempt to teleport a strike team onto the bridge of the 13th Fleet flagship USS Carl Hayden. The working is disrupted by psychics aboard Carl Hayden, and the resulting backlash damages the engines of Silver Fist, putting it out of action. T plus 73 minutes. All of the water within 45 feet of Silver Fist turns into lemon pudding. T plus 79 minutes. Brass Knuckle loses its forward battery. Captain Thomas Griffith orders the ship to close to small arms range. T plus 88 minutes. Most of the bridge crew of Brass Knuckle, including Captain Griffith, are killed by a pentagram psychic. Lieutenant Carter Hager assumes command of the ship. T plus 92 minutes. Thaumatologists aboard Silver Fist make a second attempt to teleport onto USS Carl Hayden, this time successfully transporting a pouch of live grenades into the bridge. The resulting explosion eliminates the pentagram combat psychics. T plus 96 minutes. Submarine SCPS surf screen is hit by a depth charge and disabled. Captain David DeFord orders an emergency ballast tank blow, causing surf screen to surface directly underneath the destroyer USS William Williams. Both vessels sink as a result. T plus 99 minutes. 
Fires break out in the main engine room of Brass Knuckle, temporarily disabling propulsion. T plus 105 minutes. Fires aboard Brass Knuckle spread to the auxiliary engine room. The ship loses all remaining propulsion. T plus 112 minutes. Brass Knuckle begins to rapidly sink. Lieutenant Hager gives the order to abandon ship. T plus 127 minutes. Brass Knuckle is sunk. SCPS Jack jumped and begins taking heavy fire. T plus 135 minutes. Believing that the battle might soon be lost otherwise, Captain Winona Chevalier of SCPS Jack jumped requests permission to activate SCP-5525 Antilles. T plus 137 minutes. In light of the rapidly deteriorating tactical situation, O5-3 unilaterally authorizes the emergency deployment of SCP-5525 Antilles for use against the US 13th Fleet. This decision will later be upheld by a full vote of the Overseer Council after the incident. T plus 138 minutes. The US 13th Fleet ceases to exist. For the next two days, the US government, through the Unusual Incidents Unit, continued to communicate with the Foundation and the GOC via regular channels, while ignoring inquiries about the incident. No change in American strategic posture was observed, although the Foundation raised its own alert levels at all North American sites in preparation for a possible counterstrike. On January 1, 1980, President James Carter issued a communication to the Foundation and the Global Occult Coalition apologizing for incident inside baseball and disavowing the existence of the 13th Fleet. No mention was or has since been made of the destruction of St. Jeremiah, nor of the artifacts removed from SCP-5525. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to my level 4 patron, Lesby Friends. If you would like to see your name at the end of my videos, see my videos early, and get some other cool perks, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.